This week we're going to help clarify a common point of confusion in X-ray, which is dimensions and coordinates. What's the difference between them and when should we use them? Welcome to another MetPi Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week I want to go back and talk about X-Array because it's becoming more and more critical to the meteorological data analysis infrastructure. It's really great for working with these big, highly dimensional data sets that models are producing or even that we're able to get from observations. Pandas is great, but really for that tabular data, it starts struggling when we get into multi-dimensional data. So X-Array is very powerful, but with that power, also comes confusion sometimes. So we've talked about X-Array in the past, and it's worth taking a look at those videos, but stay tuned as we're going to deep dive to be a pro on the topic of dimensions and coordinates. Okay, so we're going to do some imports to start off with. We're going to import X-Array as XR, import NumPy as NP, Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Import metpy.calc as mpcalc. And from metpy.units, we're going to import units. And some of these things we may not get to in this immediate discussion, but we're going to look at the basics of dimensions and coordinates, and then we're going to expand a little bit, look at reading in some data files and using things like calculations and units. So let's create a toy set of data here, a data array. And if you remember, there's data sets and data arrays. Data sets have many data arrays or variables as they would be called. But we're just gonna focus on a simple data array. We do that with the data array constructor. And I'm going to give it the values 23, or 25, 23, 21, 19, 17, and 15. And those are going to be in units, degrees Celsius. You might notice that that's two degrees for every one, so that sounds like kind of like a lapse rate, maybe two degrees per kilometer. So that's what we're going to pretend, is that we're dealing with temperature data here. If I look at the data array, we can see that, well, it doesn't have a lot of information yet. It's got a magnitude and the units, but there's no coordinates, there's no attributes and it's got this dim underscore zero default name with six values. Now a really common mistake that I see people make is they'll create their array and they'll say, I need to specify a dimension. And this is the temperature dimension. And they get something that looks like this. And it looks good because now it says temperature, six elements. And your pandas brain thinks that this is correct. I have now made a data series called temperature, but that's not the case. What you're actually telling it is that these values have a, uh, a dimension related to temperature. And actually the dimension is related to height, right? Because we're looking at temperatures at different heights in the atmosphere. So in fact, the dimension is related to how many degrees of freedom the data have. So if we have a 2D grid of temperature forecast over a conus, let's say, that has two degrees of freedom, an X and a Y, it has two dimensions. This though is one dimensional, has one degree of freedom. And dimensions are just names at this point. Uh, they will get to coordinates in just a little bit, but dimensions are just the name of the thing that these data go with. So we've got a dependent and independent variable, right? Okay, so this dimension shouldn't be temperature. This dimension should be height above ground level. Height AGL is what we're going to call it. Now, coordinates are the labels, or where we are on the graph, if you will, for that dimension. So in this case, our coordinates would be values of height above ground level that are associated with each data point in that data array. So if we wanted to add a coordinate here, we specify that our chords equals, 
And these are a dictionary where the key is the name of the dimension, height above ground level, and the value is the coordinates themselves. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and those are kilometers above ground. We'll close our dictionary there. And now, if we look at our data array, we see that it has our magnitude for our temperatures in degrees Celsius. The coordinates are height above ground level, and they're 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now what's really neat is if I plot that data array, and I'm going to specify that I want a marker for each data point here. Notice it's just like when we use plotting with dimensions attached elsewhere, we get those labels already done for us. So we have units of degree Celsius. We don't have a variable name yet because we're just working with a data array. So there's our temperatures. And then here we have the height AGL coordinate. Now you may say, I don't believe you because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's just a zero indexed plot. There's nothing special there. We can go up and change these if we wanted to, to be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and rerun these cells, and there we go. So we've proved to ourselves that this does work. So what gets really cool is when we start working with data sets, which we'll take uh, a look at here. We're just going to pull a NAR example from the MetPy cookbook and look at a data set and see how these coordinate and dimension concepts transfer to that. So from metpy.cbook, we're going to import get test data. And then we're going to x-ray open data set. And we're going to call that get test data function to get the nar example.nc file. This is a netcdf file. And we don't want this as a file like object. You may get a warning here if you have never opened this file, it may have to go out and download it. That's perfectly okay. If we look at the data set, now notice we have more dimensions. Time, isobaric, y, and x. We also have coordinates of time, isobaric, y, and x. For our data variables, and these are each data arrays, remember, like temperature. It has a time dimension, an isobaric dimension, a y, and an x dimension. So we have a temperature forecast on an xy grid. There's a height coordinate, so an xyz grid, really. And then we have that three-dimensional grid for multiple times. Whereas latitude and longitude are just xy. We only have a two-dimensional grid of latitude and longitude. Wind, we have all the dimensions. Height, we have all the dimensions. Humidity, we have all the dimensions. There's also these attributes that we've talked about before, and we'll go more into these later about how you can set these and how you can use information in the attributes. But today's focus is really on seeing this dimension and coordinate idea. So dimensions are the names of the degrees of freedom of data sets, the names that those could have. Coordinates are the values or the tick marks or the graph labels, if you will, of those dimensions on those data variables or data arrays. You can access the coordinates as well by looking at the chords attribute and getting some information there. Notice these have stars by them. And it's not just bullet points. That star means that it's a dimension coordinate or one that's used for labeling and alignment. Uh, it's kind of like an index on a pandas data frame or data series. But we'll dive into dimensions and non-dimension coordinates uh, another time. So you can see the data set combines the coordinate and the dimension information to make the data variables or those data arrays have some sensible way to access them. I hope that this encourages you to start using X-Array for more of your data analysis once you have some of these basic concepts under your belt. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.